Okay, imagine this. All the digital locks we use every day, banking, government stuff, personal data, just gone, broken. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the shadow hanging over us with quantum computing. And it's not sci-fi anymore, right? It feels like it's getting really close really fast, especially for cybersecurity. It really does. The timeline seems to be compressing. So today we're going to uh, really dig into one company that's making a massive bet here, like a really audacious one, Seals Coup Corp. They specialize in secure semiconductors. Right. L-E-E, I saw NASDAQ you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So our mission for you listening is to unpack what Seals Coup is doing, this whole strategy they have, their initiatives, and help you figure out is this a real quantum fortress they're building? Or is it, you know, maybe just a shiny distraction? Yeah, because the sources we have give a pretty detailed picture, but also raise some serious questions. Definitely. We'll look at their whole approach from chips right up to satellites. We need to weigh up the potential, the synergy against the, well, the risks of actually pulling it off. It's quite the scope from silicon to space. So quantum computing. Mm. For ages, it felt like this, you know, academic thing. Far off. But now... Suddenly, it's seen as this huge disruptor. Mm -hmm. Why now? Why is it such a big deal for cybersecurity at this moment? Well, the core issue, the reason it's urgent now is that the encryption we use for literally everything online. The backbone, yeah. Exactly, the backbone. It could theoretically be completely broken by powerful enough quantum computers. We're not talking about a simple software update here. No. It forces us to rethink the entire security infrastructure, like from the ground up. We need solutions before that happens. That's where SEALs Q comes in, LAEs. They're not just, you know, writing papers about post-quantum security. They seem to be actively building for it. That's the claim. And our sources point out something pretty striking. They've got $90 million in cash and zero debt. Plus, they spun off from WiseKey, so they have that secure semiconductor background. That financial footing is crucial. It really is. $90 yeah. million, no debt. That means they can fund this vision, pursue it without compromise, as one source puts it. They're pushing this multi-pronged quantum strategy, and they have this SEAL quantum initiative setting aside up to $20 million just for targeted investments in quantum and AI ventures. So it's not just talk. They're putting serious money behind it. Yeah, it suggests they're focused on building systems, not just, you know, chasing the latest buzzwords. It looks like a real commitment. Okay, so let's look at the first pillar, the foundation. That seems to be quantum-ready hardware, specifically this QS7001 chip. Mm -hmm. The sources say it's engineered to survive what quantum computing may soon break. And importantly, it's already in motion, not just in planning. How unusual is that, having actual hardware ready in this space? It's pretty significant. A lot of post-quantum talk is still very much roadmap and research. Having a chip they claim is quantum resistant that's already being produced or close to it, yeah. that signals a hardware-first approach. The idea is to build security right into the silicon, a hardened chip platform that's viable even after quantum computers become a threat. So embedding it deep down, not just adding software layers on top. Exactly. It's inherently more robust, more future-proof if they get it right. It definitely lays the groundwork for that fortress idea. Okay, so they have the chip foundation, but then they're looking outwards, leveraging quantum power from others. Let's talk pillar two, Calibre TD. Ah, yes, the French quantum startup. Right. They provide quantum as a service, CAIS. And apparently, they launched a quantum cloud service together back in March 2025. What's the synergy there? This is actually quite clever. Calibre TD service lets SEALSQ do something critical simulate quantum attacks against their own systems. Ah, okay, so they can test their new chips against future threats, basically. Precisely. Validate that its upcoming quantum-resistant chips can withstand them in real time. This helps speed everything up, thermal modeling, penetration testing, certification cycles. So faster, more secure chip releases. Exactly. And it integrates with standard design tools like Synopsys and Cadence, so it's practical. They're using quantum computing power to accelerate their own R&D for quantum-resistant hardware. That makes sense. But then, Pillar 3 takes us way out there, literally, into space. Why is that space? Yeah, the satellite angle. A startup focused on secure IoT comes from orbit. Sealsco put $10 million in, helps launch YSAT 3 via SpaceX in June 2025. I mean, satellites, it, it sounds amazing. Very quantum fortress in the sky. It does have that feel. But how much does one satellite launch really prove? Is this where maybe the shiny distraction question comes in? Well, the key thing they did demonstrate with YSAT3 was blockchain-secured IoT transactions using Seals Co.'s quantum rootkey chip. Okay, so using their own secure chip in that space demo. Right. 
That ship is designed to be a route of trust, resistant to quantum attacks. The big vision here is ambitious, no doubt. Delivering quantum encrypted keys and firmware updates from space to edge devices anywhere on Earth. Wow, that would be transformative. Totally. Think about secure updates for defense systems, autonomous cars, critical infrastructure in remote places, a whole new trust model, potentially. The demo is just step one, obviously. Yeah. Scalability is the real test. Okay, it's easy to get carried away with the space stuff, but Pillar 4 seems much more, well, grounded. An immediate quantum use case. Yes, this one is very practical. Sealskew, Calibra TD again, and another French firm, Xdigit, using quantum algorithms for something very specific in chip design. Right. They're tackling IR drop problems. IR drop. Sounds technical. It is, but it's important. It's basically voltage losses in the chip's power delivery network. It really impacts yield rates and performance, especially on these advanced chips, like sub-7 nanometer. So fewer working chips per wafer, lower performance. Exactly. And on these cutting edge expensive chips, even a small improvement in yield, getting slightly more working chips, can mean huge cost savings. Millions, maybe billions across the industry. Ah, uh, okay, so they're using quantum optimization technique. Enhanced by quantum algorithms, yeah. To try and boost wafer yields and reduce costly design rework. It's taken this high concept quantum computing and applying it for direct, measurable operational gains today. That's a powerful example. Okay, so when you lay it all at the chip, the cost testing, the satellites, the yield optimization, it sounds incredibly comprehensive. A real full stack vision. It does on paper. But as you said, ambition isn't execution. Yeah. And the sources definitely raise flags. This quantum theater question, what's the basis for the skepticism? You mentioned the partners. The core issue is commercial reality or the lack of it so far. As of mid-2025, neither Calibre DD nor Ysat Space has reported revenue. Ah. Uh, so these quantum layers, the quas, the satellite stuff, it's all still experimental, pre-revenue. Essentially, yes. Right. Which means there's significant execution risk. And that risk is amplified because SealSkew only holds minority stakes in these partners. Meaning they don't have full control. Right. So if there are delays, misalignments, or pivots by Calibrity or YSAT space, it could really mess up SealSkew's grand synergistic plan. Mm. It led one analyst to say, pretty bluntly, this is either one of the most forward integrated quantum security roadmaps on the market or a well-funded science project. Ouch. That really frames the dilemma for someone trying to evaluate this. Science project or genuine roadmap? Exactly. That's the core question you need to grapple with. But SealsQ's management obviously pushes back against that skepticism. The CEO, Carlos Marrera, is quoted saying, These are not side bets. They are foundational to a new cybersecurity model one that we intend to own end to end. Strong words. Very strong. And there is some evidence to back up that conviction beyond just the partnerships. Like what? Well, looking deeper into their operations, they have things like chip personalization centers, a clear post-quantum TPM roadmap that's trusted platform modules, and they're actively targeting use cases in demanding sectors like medtech, automotive, aerospace. Okay, so integrating this quantum thinking across their actual business lines, not just in these external ventures. It suggests it's becoming more of an operational standard for them, not just, you know, marketing fluff or R&D side projects. It points towards a deeper company-wide commitment. So wrapping this up, where does this leave us and you, the listener? SealsQ is clearly making a big, calculated leap, as the sources say, using their financial strength to bet big on a future where quantum threats are real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a hedge against that future. And if this whole roadmap actually works, if they get commercial traction and real differentiation from these quantum-enabled chips and services... They really could redefine secure hardware, build that quantum fortress. But and it's a big but. Without hitting those near-term milestones, actual customers adopting the chips, seeing the Qualys stuff generate real business, the hype could easily get ahead of reality. Making it look more like that shiny distraction. The execution risk remains high. Definitely. Which leads to a final thought, maybe something for you to chew on. Yeah. In this kind of high-risk, high-reward space, how do companies like SealsQ strike that balance? Between the genuinely groundbreaking, long-term innovation and the very real need to show tangible progress, commercial validation in the near term, especially in this quantum race. That's the tightrope they're walking. And maybe think about this too. Beyond just revenue, what other benchmarks could you use to judge if these frontier tech plays are actually succeeding, especially when the threat they're tackling still feels a bit over the horizon for many? Interesting things to consider. Lots to unpack there with SealsQ strategy.